drive, 615. Let's go for a drive. Here it is, the all new Mercedes AMG SL63 Roadster. I've had this for the past week from Mercedes as a press loan, where I've been daily driving it and getting to know it inside and out. And as always, we'll take a look at the exterior, the interior, then we'll go out and take it for a drive. Exterior color of this vehicle is Manufacturer Alpine Gray, a $1,750 option that brings the total MSARP of this vehicle up to $206,600. Let's go ahead and take a closer look up front. As we work our way down to the front, you see these massive bulges on the hood. Really like the design language of that and the styling, and this all comes down to the Panamera style front grille. Now, the only thing I would change in this vehicle, this part's blacked out through here, which I think looks incredible, but these little parts through here and this whole section down here and down to this lower front lip, it's all kind of plasticky. It's black, which looks good, but I wish it was gloss black like the rest of it. Uh, maybe there was some reasoning behind that, but obviously it would have been more expensive, but I think that would be a nice option to have. I love the front end of this vehicle. Very aggressive, yet still kind of elegant. I really like down through here, this little bit, these little inlets, these are active. If I touch all the way in here, I can feel the cooling through there. And then these beautiful HID headlights. Now, take a look at the color. Over here, we're in the direct sunlight. This Alpine gray looks really good, but when you look over here, it almost looks like a totally different color. Looks much more uh, kind of purplish, more blue. Uh, maybe I've just been looking at it too long and the sun's getting to me, but I really do feel like I like having that contrast when, you know, bright sunlight, it looks one way. And then over here in the darkness looks a little bit different. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile. Here are the profile. I really love just the shape of this vehicle. The silhouette is absolutely gorgeous. Heavier on the front end, then it kind of tapers off on the back end. Now I do think this car looks best with the top down. With the top up, it doesn't look bad, but again, I prefer it in convertible mode. And I think really with the wing up as well, it doesn't look bad with the wing down, top up, but this is the perfect way to have the car stance. With the rear wing up, it really balances out this vehicle because again, it's heavy up front, long, and kind of tapers off, but that rear wing really helps with the silhouette of the vehicle. Absolutely love these wheels. These are, put it on record, my all-time favorite wheels. In a prior video, I said that I love the stock wheels on a car. This, is, this takes the cake. These are absolutely gorgeous. The 21-inch cross-spoke forged wheels, AMG, 21s all around. The center lock design is absolutely gorgeous. You got the AMG printed on there twice on the top and bottom. And then we got the carbon ceramic brakes. That's an $8,950 option. Gives you those beautiful bronze colored brake calipers, massive brakes, a lot of stopping power because this is a very powerful car. One more thing to touch on down through here. You got the V8 bi-turbo 4 -matic plus indication with this little kind of inlet here. Not the biggest fan of that. It almost seems like it was kind of afterthought, kind of stuck on. Maybe if it was gloss black or if it was something active, I think I would like it more, but this wasn't for me. But other than that, everything else looks good. Let's take a look at the rear. I absolutely love the rear end of this vehicle. Again, with the wing up, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, my dad pointed out something when he was looking at the back end. With the wing up, you can kind of see everything underneath here. And it's, I don't know, I, I think it would look better if somehow this was body color. So when the wing up, it just didn't look like the wing was up revealing everything underneath it. I know it's got to have room for the components, but maybe with the wing up, you can make it a little bit more pretty, I guess you could say. SL63 badge here, AMG badge over here. I like how this is all blacked out. This is gloss black. Now this doesn't have the night package, otherwise it would have had the blacked out tips. So maybe with the night package, that would give you some gloss black up front, like I alluded to. Quad exhaust, this thing sounds really good when you're getting on it, but when I rev it up, it's not crazy loud. I'll make sure that the active AMG Performance Exhaust is on. I'll turn that on and do some revs. Then we'll go ahead and go for a drive. And then we'll look under the trunk too. As you can hear, a little bit of burble, but the best time to hear those crackles and burbles is when you're really getting on it, uh, doing downshifts under load. Take a quick look underneath the trunk. Not a whole lot of space back here. I was able to fit several cases of waters, but not a ton of space in the trunk category, but just enough if you're going like a weekend trip or something like that. Let's go ahead and work our way towards the interior of the vehicle. Starting right here, we've got this backlit illuminated door handle. Absolutely gorgeous with the Mercedes-Benz font logo right there, which you guys could feel just how solid and heavy this handle and door are. It really speaks just to how well Mercedes has manufactured this vehicle. 
You guys can see we've got ambient lighting throughout the entirety of this vehicle, as well as our manufacturer style exclusive Tartufo brown and black Napa leather interior and $1,900 option. I think Mercedes Benz is really second to none with the stitching and designs of their seats. They're just absolutely gorgeous throughout. Let's go ahead and sit inside, start her up and take a closer look. What I love about Mercedes is they don't just keep all their nice touches to this area. I mean, even just the door panel alone has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten different textures and dynamics and just it continues throughout the entirety of this vehicle again it's just absolutely gorgeous the finishes that they do and the care that they take in designing their cars got the burmester sound system got the amg side sill amg on the mat and we've got amg pedals down there with the ambient lighting shining on them we'll go ahead and start it up foot on the brake push to start and you'll see we got a couple different colors there so i went from red to pinkish purple back to our blue we're going to go ahead and start here with this and i'm going to point out one big difference about this and some of the other vehicles is that you can actually push that and that will tilt up this entire display angle you can also pick exactly how much you want it to be tilted so i go down like this it'd be a little bit more a little bit less there so um, it's pretty cool to see. I've never seen something like this in a vehicle, but this is helpful for when the top's down and there's glare from the sun. If you tilt it in a certain way, you won't be getting the glare on your big screen there. Love the AMG steering wheel. We got the driver assistance package in this vehicle as well as the performance line package. I love this. I've always loved how you can switch between your modes on the fly. You can do it with your thumb if you got both hands on the wheel. Super nice option. You can use this with your thumb here, but it's intuitive to want to turn this because this looks almost identical to this minus these little add-ons. You actually can't turn this. What you do is you actually tap the screen to display what you'd like to change and then press the button to engage it. For example, that disengage the sport exhaust and that engages it. Got a beautiful screen through there. 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster heads up display you got the 11.9 inch electrically adjustable MBUX this is equipped with the MBUX as well as the active lighting so basically if I were reaching down here in the floorboard it would sense that I'm reaching out over there and give me adequate lighting super handy feature at first I was a little taken off guard but now that I've been in enough Mercedes, I understand kind of how the flow works. This is for the fingerprint, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, I feel very James Bond-esque, you know, starting up your vehicle that way. Go ahead and click on AMG here. I like the little background here. Very, very cool. So this is it driving kind of on a checkered flag. And this is very intense, kind of like the uh, horizon of the earth. Then you go here, a little bit less intense, kind of gauging back and then you get to nice kind of chill comfort and I think that's pretty unique I've seen a lot of cool different designs on a vehicle but this is something uh, that's again very unique there you can see it's kind of got raindrops falling raindrops because it's the slippery mode and of course the drive the suspension and the dynamics will change between every mode and this individual mode is going to give you a way to set it up exactly how you like now this is a convertible so one thing I was not a fan of, to put the top up, you actually have to hold this all the way over. And it takes about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven seconds or so. But typically in a convertible, you would pull something here or flip a switch. This is something, again, if you want to put the top up or down, you've got to fully hold it and it takes about the same time to put the top down. Now this does have a tan underside of the top. I could have done with black or maybe even brown to match this. I'm not sure if um, you know what the idea behind the spec was, but just something uh, worth noting. Touch based on a few more things up here. This is one solid panel through here, so it's almost like a teeter-totter. So by pushing in here, actually raises up this and then by pushing in here kind of tilts this so 
it's taken a minute to getting used to because you push in and you kind of feel the whole thing move but again that's not a huge issue but I can see maybe down the line if you're wearing and tearing too much on something like this it could maybe impact other aspects of it let's press home though let's take a look through here performance is very cool because that'll actually show the actual dynamics of the vehicle their g-force and then your different uh parameters as far as the degrees of psi of the suspension so that's this really cool tech you know if you're really into that side of it in the data engine here i'll give it a little rev you can see that pulsating through no psi on the boost because we are not actually getting on it not actually utilizing those turbos but you can see a little bit of torque and a little bit of horsepower flowing through there it's kind of cool it got a dynamic of the vehicle with the engine up front big engine for this vehicle consumptions miles per gallon you can see i've uh, been thoroughly enjoying this vehicle at uh, eight miles per gallon of course you could you know drive it a little bit slower drive a little bit more conservatively and get that number up quite a bit probably could easily double that but uh, i've been having fun with it for sure let's go back home and let's go to track pace this will show you your where your local tracks are which is pretty cool got the amg speedway and a couple mile track over out there you can click on specifically mercedes amg tracks which is really awesome as well we'll come back one screen got the drag race function so watch this so if you're actually at the track and you do this countdown and it's almost like a mario kart kind of like a video game it counts you down and if i was out on the track i could just floor it and see my uh kind of distance and my timing got the telemetry feature on here as well which shows the percent that you're down on the accelerator. So I kind of did a little blip there and got 29%, press home there and then go to comfort there. And that's where you can do the different massage seat functions. This does have the massaging seats, change the bolsters, the heating. Then you can go to ambient lighting and that's again where you can change the inside. And it's amazing how quick it works. I can literally put my finger to green and before I can finish saying the word green, it's changed over to green i love that we've got the air scarf right here so when you turn that on that will blow air out right here keep your neck and back nice and warm when you turn the heated seat on when you got the top down i've had the top down pretty much non-stop it's 52 degrees i could say you could even go a bit colder and have the top down because this vehicle will just keep you so nice and warm if we go back home we got beautiful navigation this is a very soft screen it's almost kind of weird to say that it's soft i mean it's hard but it's like butter how smooth and you can see there i'm just sliding my finger back and forth and it's not glitching it's not lagging i love this it's beautiful but again if it's someone that's used to you know you want to turn um change the lights uh that's not something that's in typical cars though you don't have a change light button but you might have you know your your different climate controls and that's a little different so you gotta actually do that here and if you want to go in any further and change the climate menu you can click right there so i know on some cars you can just kind of press the, the climate button to change where the air comes out this you can click on the menu so things take a few different steps but not the end of the world by any means and again once you spend a lot of time with it and get used to it you should be set you got your lighting up here mercedes me We'll come down here. Got a decent amount of space in here. You got your two USB C's through here. And we will open this up. Got the NFC pairing and the wireless induction charging right there. A couple cup holders and two more USB C's. Now, I have no clue what this is. I think it's kind of to rest your hand here, but I kept wanting to flip this up or move it forward or slide it. I mean, typically in a lot of these cars, there's some gear selections here and stuff, but. This was something that was unique, just kind of a hard, maybe a resting pad there. Does have rear seats. I love the speaker back here, so you get the full immersive experience. The rear seats don't have much room though. One more thing too, we'll talk about the paddle shifters. They are mounted to the steering wheel and they are pretty cool. They're kind of like a, almost like an E design there. And then there's a reverse E over here. They got a really great feel to them, very solid. I like that when they're not plasticky and real cheapy. These are solid power shifters for a solid car. Let's get out on the road and take this thing for a drive. Behind the wheel and on the road in the SL63, what are we working with underneath the hood? That is a Mercedes AMG handcrafted four liter 
bi-turbo V8 producing 577 horsepower and 590 pound-foot of torque. This will do zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds with a top track speed of 196 miles an hour. I can tell you, through my week of testing, I've gotten nowhere close to that speed, but I've had plenty of fun, and this thing is just absolutely incredibly fast, luxurious, and you can take the top down. I'll do the first part of the review with the top up, then we'll take it down for the latter half and really show you what it's like to experience this car, how it was intended to be experienced. This is paired to a nine speed AMG Speed Shift MCT transmission. Super fast shift. So I got the paddle shifts mounted to the steering wheel. Right now I'm in Sport Plus mode. I'm in M4. I'm gonna go M3. I'm gonna come to the top of this hill. I'm gonna pop it down into M2 and then I'm gonna hit it. Here we go, M2, let's go. These are lightning fast. Granted, I've been driving this car all week, so I'm used to the speed. And that's just generally puts you back in your seat. But the nice thing about it is not that like terribly aggressive where it's like throws you back. It's almost like it's almost like uh kind of like the EV power where it kind of comes on just linear and smooth. And the best part about these power shift is you can really control from the performance exhaust, the down pop. So if you hit a certain RPM, I figured out that the sweet spot is kind of going up to around 5,000 and then letting it off and it'll do some down burbles or alternatively, down shifting like that, you get some nice down pops. Now that there on the low end torque, I feel like this car is really torquey on that low end which is, in my opinion, the perfect spot for a car to be fast. That 30 to 70 range is when you're having the most fun. How often is it that you're doing, you know, high-end pulls where you're going 70 to, to 130, I mean, unless you're doing some, you know, street racing, you don't really need that. The, the, the most fun is, in my opinion, when you're on the road and you're going light to light, you know, just launching it off the light and just having fun. I mean, you don't need to go over into the triple digits in this car to have fun because that low-end power is just really, I think, where this car thrives. So not only is the engine great, the transmission is great, these paddle shifts are just, they feel good too. And then again, they're lightning quick, just in a matter of seconds, you know, I'm shifting between the gears all the way up through nine. And again, in my opinion, I never really need to go up to nine. I'm really doing in that, you know, second, third, fourth, maybe fifth, if I'm, you know, on the interstate, but I don't really paddle shift beyond, again, those kind of lower end gears. As far as the suspension goes, this car is incredibly smooth. Like I mentioned, we're sitting on 21s, but that's not the only reason this car is smooth. There's a whole bunch of different factors that go into it. One of them being the four wheel multi-link suspension. So we got the five link rear axle, but new to the SL and the AMT lineup is the five link front axle. So the combination of those two is gonna give you some really nice cornering abilities. You can come into corners at a lot higher speed. It's also gonna give you a lot more stability. I mean, this car is really smart. It's, it's constantly adjusting and adapting to make sure that you know you got the perfect uh, dampening of the suspension in certain areas. It's also got the AMG active ride control. So that's really cool as well, because that will independently and hydraulically versus the mechanical system will hydraulically adapt between the different dampening points and the different suspension of each wheel independently so it kind of levels it out. So if you're hitting potholes, which Nashville is uh, you know, notorious for having some big potholes, this will allow you to, to get through it perfectly and, and just keep it like, you know, basically like you never hit it at all. This is such a smooth car again, like I said, it's I'm hitting stuff that I would normally hit in my Corvette or other cars, even in Sport Plus where it's a little bit tighter suspension. I don't feel it at all. I mean, I could put it into comfort and it'd be like, you know, just not even non-existent. So this is perfect for, uh, you know, any terrain or streets that may, uh, may affect it. We've also got rear wheel steering. So that's also pretty cool as well. I alluded to the higher cornering speeds. Under 62 miles an hour, you get a two and a half degree radius on the uh, degree of angle. Over 62, you get 0.7 degree. So what that really means is it kind of tightens up your uh, turning radius and the wheelbase of the car by turning the rear wheels 
essentially opposite of the front and shortening it up, like I said. And that's good, you know, when you're doing some high speed cornering, if you're out of the track, of course, or if you're, even if you're just coming fast onto an on-ramp, you know, it's good for something like that. But in a daily driving scenario, like I said, I tested this in a daily driving scenario and it was, you know, out the other night for dinner, needed to parallel park. It was perfect, you know, at that low speed, that rear roll steering really came in handy to kind of get me nestled in in a tight parking scenario. So that's super handy as well. I haven't done a whole lot of uh, hard driving. You know, I've been giving you guys a lot of stats. I'll hit you with a couple more on the engine and then we'll get into the best part, you know, where I really do a lot of accelerating. But as far as the engine goes, another stat on that, it's got the active crankcase ventilation as well as the rearranged intercoolers and finally higher boost. Those three things are specifically designed for this SL engine. I mean, this car just on the face is incredible when you look at some of the stats, but when you really dive deep into this vehicle and actually look at all the work that they put into this car, specifically designing and tuning and rearranging literally the engine for this SL, you come to have a much more you know, deeper and, and, and more grateful appreciation of it because you realize it's not just a you know big V8 stuffed in there. Uh, there's a lot of thought that went behind it and that really is what on the back end contributes just to how incredible this vehicle drives. It's got the hot V, hot inner V configuration that gives you better performance and then this better packaging as well. There's a big engine stuffed up in there. And the coolest part about it all, I just mentioned all that stuff for the engine. All these engines are still handcrafted and with a signature plate of the person who built it over in Germany. So that's really awesome as well. It'd be cool if you could have a connection with the person, if you could send the person that built you the engine or built the engine for your car. Of course they build quite a few, but send them an email and be like, hey man, I've been loving my, loving my V8. You know, it's been a blast. And uh, again, I love that. And the, in, the hot inner V and just the configuration is supposed to have no turbo lag or virtually none. I do realize that there's, I mean, I feel like there's some so we're about to get on it here, about to get on a main road. It's pretty instantaneous, but I do feel like there's some lag. So we'll go ahead and go in here and I'm gonna roll into it. Wow, now that, that was incredible. That was instantaneous. I feel like the, the lag comes from the lower end when I'm launching it off a line, but that was instant. I rolled right into it. And what was crazy, after I let off my foot off the gas, it kept going. And that's something that took a minute to get used to. This thing is so powerful, it's like a freight train. Once it gets rolling, you know, it's got great stopping power because of the carbon ceramics, but if you're just solely using the gas pedal and you let off, it's gonna keep going a little bit. It's gonna carry that forward momentum that it had. So that's just something to, uh, to keep in mind. But I mean, this thing is just incredible. I've been trying to get more into a little bit of the tech side. I'm, I'm still more just about the experience of driving and the emotions that come along with it, you know, and you know, the different interactions that I've had with it. I'm trying to get a little bit more into the tech side because I think that is what leads up to the, the great emotions that you have when you drive a car like this. And I can tell you what, this has definitely put a smile on my face every mile I've driven it. Oh man, that's crazy. So just then I kind of bumped into a, a manhole cover. It wasn't a pothole, but it was a dip down manhole cover. I heard it, I felt it a tiny bit, but barely at all. I mean, this basically adapted itself to, to level out one more cool feature on this has got the, the specific model has the front lift, which will raise 1.2 inches. So you can go into the settings here of the vehicle and you can do the raise level when you're at a lower speed and you can pull into wherever you're going, say like your work or house, you can put it as a favorite and then GPS will know that every time you pull into that area and that specific coordinate, to raise the vehicle so that's really nice as well if you have a steep driveway or just a you know a rough entrance pulling into work it's going to do that for you every time you need i cannot get over how incredible this car is i'm in sport plus right now i drove it in comfort the other day just to, to see how it was still pretty quick but you don't get nearly as much of those you know excitement from the down pops and burbles and dust it's much more tamed down but the road manners on this car are just incredible. It's like a heat seeking missile, honestly. Like you, wherever you wanna go, wherever you wanna point this car, it's gonna go there and it's gonna go there quick and smooth. I mean, I was just kind of messing around the other day, switching lanes at a little bit quicker speed just to see what it was like. And there's 
virtually zero body roll at all in the vehicle and it's just so you know planted and grounded so I'm gonna get onto a nice street here since moving uh, houses I've got a new little test facility test track that I go through and obviously of course being conscious of uh, other cars on the road and uh, speed limits and whatnot but and I was down pops with no shift at all on my part M3 M2 and also for the longest time I was thinking that the tires were squeaking that's actually a blow off from the turbo it's not like the crazy ones that you hear on some of the more like uh, JDM cars where it kind of like squeals and does a little woo. this one does a little like squeak and it's from the front you can really hear it when you got the top down so I'm gonna do a few more pulls here I'm gonna go ahead and put it over in individual mode and I notice when I'm in individual mode I can't figure out how but it puts me in manual mode where I have to use the paddle shifters and I feel like this individual mode the way it's set up is definitely the most aggressive oh my goodness it's just wow that was basically a red line just then up to 7,000 is when the red line is so it hit that for a second and then it's like shift and I, you know, I immediately shifted but it did pull power a little bit because it was like waiting for me to shift so I'm in M4 M3 I gotta put the active wing up that has been the coolest part of this car you can literally lower it whenever you want so I got it fully maxed out right now at its highest point let's do another pull here so we're at M3 M2 oh my goodness it is just so quick I'm gonna go and put it back into Sport Plus, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the top down. So, so long as I'm going under 37 miles an hour, we can operate the soft top, and as you saw, it doesn't take that long to put it down. About to get some major wind noise, so I apologize for that, but once I put the windows up as far as the mic, uh, you should be good. In real reality, it's not that windy. You know, it's really, the Mercedes has done a good job of aerodynamically engineering their vehicle to where you hardly get any buffering or, or wind noise funneling through. You get a little bit, you feel a little bit coming through, which is nice. Ideally, I think, I always thought a convertible, you know, should be driven with the top down. Of course, if it's your only car, it's raining, not good conditions, put the top up. But I've always thought that, you know, when you got a convertible, put the top down, enjoy it how it's intended to be enjoyed. I'm gonna throw the sunglasses on. I've been thinking really hard. I just don't know who the exact buyer for this car would be. It's incredibly fast, it's incredibly luxurious, but a convertible, I, I kind of, in my mind, I see, and maybe I'm a little biased because I actually saw uh, uh, AMG uh, convertible down in South Florida, it was actually in 30A, and I saw someone had a car backed in in their garage, they also had a Bentley too. I, I envision this as a down south car, you put the top down. I don't envision this as someone's daily, and their only car, this is more like a, a supplemental car. I mean, granted, this is 206,000, so it's a certain type of person that can buy this. I'm waiting for this light to turn green, we're gonna launch it off the line, and you'll see there will be a little bit of turbo lag. Again, we're in Sport Plus, and I'm gonna floor it immediately, and we'll see just how fast I get off the line. There's a Porsche over there beside me. Not gonna intentionally race him, but I feel like he's gonna wanna race, uh, seeing that I'm in his fast car too. Just so fast, the car just pulled up, pulled over in front of me, made a U-turn, and I was on the carbon ceramic brakes quick. And this thing is just again, I can't say enough good things about it. You know, I feel like I I harp on a lot of things. <laughs> Actually, it took the breath away from me. I'm like, I'm like struggling to like talk. There's the Porsche. She finally caught up. Wow, I was uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I mean, this thing is like. This thing's almost, I, there you go, I heard the little spool just in. I feel like this thing's almost a sleeper, unless they see the 63 badge, the bi-turbo cladding on the side. They made this thing, oh, that's just a Mercedes convertible. Little did they know, you got 577 horsepower, 590 pound-foot of torque. I think that higher torque number, you know, kind of trumping the horsepower, is what gives it that pull and just that smooth, just feel to it. I mean, it's just, 
it's just an incredible car. There's just so many good things I could talk about it, but I'm gonna show you here again. Wow, I hope you guys heard that, that was incredible. Oh man. Oh, I love this thing. It's only broken loose once. That was because I floored it, it's kind of cold out, and you know, maybe a little bit of moisture. Other than that, it's been really, really good to drive. This vehicle has 4Matic, which will actually give you 100% rear wheel driving, but based upon the vehicle input and the driving conditions, it will make this vehicle all wheel drive, which is really, really handy. Now I got the top down. Earlier you saw I could change the display angle of the screen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt that back so I get no sun glare, and that is absolutely awesome. The sun is directly behind me, when it was flat, it was bright, having some glare. Now it's up, perfect. Absolutely love it. I always talk about these in my reviews and it seems like it's more specifically with the AMGs and Mercedes. This is a $206,000 car. People definitely love the color. People definitely thought it looked sleek. But if you really want someone to think you spent 200 grand on a car, this might not be the one for you. You know, it's brand new, granted. Incredibly amazing, but you know, if you want, again, someone to think that you're spend a ton of money on a car then maybe you get like a used mclaren or a used ferrari or maybe dip into a super used lambo but if you want a brand new car no miles perfect then this is going to be the car for you again but just don't expect people to to know that you've got the the big dog essentially i'm going to go through this tunnel here and then we'll put the top up and close it up here we go oh my god Sometimes I genuinely get scared and that was like a crazy experience with the top down because you just hear the reverberation. Let's go ahead and put the top up and close this out. Oh my goodness. Like I said, people will definitely notice it and people will definitely think it looks cool, but they might not know that you got the big dog. And the only thing better than this, really, in this, in this kind of category for AMG is gonna be the AMG GTR. It's got more horsepower quite a bit more expensive I'd say um although actually I don't know if what the exact price on the AMG GTR is these days but in that same ballpark um but again hope you guys enjoy this video if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and subscribe if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them down in the comment section below we'll see you guys in the next video I'm over now